So there are a handful of what I might charitably call game maker urban legends that do the rounds on the internet once in a while. And I think the community as a whole could benefit from um, actually having someone clear the air on them. So if you had a simple function, let's call it function add, uh, which is going to add two numbers. And um, just to keep people on their toes, let's have it return a minus b. Um, raise your hand if you've ever heard that you can speed up a function like this by putting something which is known as gml pragma force inline in the first line of the function. Or I guess in lieu of raising your hand, uh, go down into the comments and say something, I guess. Anyway, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and poking the engine to see what kind of noises it makes. And today we are going to talk about the gml pragma force inline uh, compiler setting. So, uh, what is this? And why do people say that it'll make your code faster? So, uh, GML pragma is kind of a fake function uh, as far as the runtime is concerned. Uh, it's one of um, one of several functions in GameMaker which aren't executed by the runtime, but instead executed by the compiler, and they will uh, have a have an effect on how your game is compiled rather than how it runs. So, inline in code, the theory goes that if you have a, a very simple function like this, and if you uh, if you call it somewhere in your code, so let's say var um, result equals like add uh, 10 and 15 or something like that. My favorite numbers to pick on. So the reasoning behind why people say that this is a free performance is a um, is a valid one. So the uh, the theory goes that when you call a function in a computer, it actually has to do a couple of things. It has to first um, allocate a new stack frame for the function call. It has to jump to the address of the um, of the instructions where the function lives inside the computer, and then there's a few other exciting low-level things. And it would be marginally faster if for simple operations like this you could just replace the function call with literally uh, 10 minus 15, or whatever happens to be the contents of the function. That's what inline encode does. Uh, it's basically a somewhat fancier version of calling a macro function in languages that support macro functions. And then it follows from there that um, just being able to like skip doing all the all the function call shenanigans that I mentioned will give you a small performance boost. That's all valid reasoning, right? Uh, computers have been doing this for a long time. So unfortunately, this is not the slam dunk in terms of free performance that some people make it sound in GameMaker uh, for a few specific reasons. First and foremost, if you're running GameMaker in the GameMaker VM in the virtual machine, which is the default mode of operation which most people are going to be using, uh, this just doesn't do anything at all. And we can do some tests. Uh, let's see. If I were to, firstly, let me run a version of this with this commented out, and we're going to um, we're going to call the add function, and then I'm going to go and look around uh, inside the game maker bytecode, which is a thing that I uh, sometimes find myself doing when I want to investigate uh, performance in game maker. So we can do that by opening up a command prompt. Uh, running the asset compiler ourselves, and then using the slash cv argument to show verbose output. And uh, that's going to allow us to have a look at the uh, the actual bytecode that's generated by this. If I were to um, uncomment that, and then if I were to run this again, open up a second command prompt, uh, invoke the asset compiler with .net, uh, we're going to we're going to run that. Let's see if I put the uh, if I scroll these two console windows to exactly the same place. Uh, we can see that the uh, the output is exactly the same, both with and without the force inline um, option added to that function. So if you're running your game in the Game Maker VM, which most of you probably are, uh, this does absolutely nothing. It won't even be recognized by the runtime, by the compiler, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there is perhaps an argument to be made that maybe this is a valid feature request that you could add to, add to Game Maker to make this work in the Game Maker VM. Um, I don't know how likely that is to happen this late in the current runtime's lifespan. I'll discuss the I'll discuss GMRT towards the end of the video. But um, as far as VM goes, this is fairly cut and dry. So in the uh, in the YYC, this is a little bit more interesting. So um, the YYC is a uh, is a fancy uh, fancy tool which you can use, which will uh, instead of running your game maker game inside the game maker VM. It will convert it to C++, or a, um, a very messy form of C++ at any rate, and it will compile the C++ to native machine code for whatever your target platform is. And uh, there's some trade-offs there. It tends to be faster. Uh, it tends to be harder to debug for various reasons. 
the reason which this is relevant to this video is that running inlined code in the YYC actually will um, actually will do something. So if I open up the uh, the location where uh, the game maker YYC will generate all of its temp files, I believe on my computer that's going to be on uh, I think on the F drive. Uh, I am very good at naming files on my computer, as you can see. Uh, game Maker, Asset Catch. Um, by default, on your computer, this will probably be in local storage. Uh, I, I moved it to the F drive because I wanted to. Um, anyway, uh, test function inline default scripts, uh, LLVM windows. And here we can see uh, GML. What was that called? GML script one, GML global script one dot CPP. What a name. Anyway, if you open up this, this is the generated C++ that, um, that that code file turned into. It is not the neatest. Normally, it doesn't really matter that this is kind of a mess because it's not meant to be, like, human readable, but um, the compiler can read it just fine. Anyway, you can poke around inside here and you can notice a few things that might look a little familiar. For example, the definition of the add function that we wrote uh, looks something like this. Anyway, I don't want to get too into dissecting the YYC C++ here. Um, if you follow follow along with your finger, you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, for example, you have your um, your return value, which is getting initialized to undefined, and then uh, we have our actual subtraction operation here. So just keep this in mind. Um, I'm going to go and uncomment GML Pragma Force inline now and run this again, and that is going to regenerate the file. And uh, that's probably also going to actually run the game and pop up the uh, the empty window. Uh, which I don't really want, but the file is going to be regenerated. And if we come back to the, um, if we come back to it, we can see that there's been a few changes. Namely, we've added the uh, a force inline macro to the beginning of this function signature, and also a, a, a force inline macro at the end of this function signature here. Uh, this is just a macro which usually is, just turns into the actual C C++ inline keyword um, by the preprocessor. Uh, it is slightly different on different. Um, different export targets. Anyway, the point is that the GML pragma force inline function actually does something here. And this will cause this function to be inlined. Uh, if we wanted to, we could do some performance tests and we can see the difference in performance that we're going to get. So let me write a uh, two version of... So I didn't like how my original recording for these speed tests went, so I'm going to do it again. So. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be running the inlined version of the add function and the normal version of the add function one million times each. We're going to use the get timer trick to figure out exactly how long that takes. We're going to compare the results and we're going to count up the number of times over the course of 20 runs that the inlined version of the add function is actually faster. So we've already established that this does not do anything in GameMaker VM, so I'm going to jump down here to YYC. Uh, we're going to run this. This is going to take a minute to build the game and compile it. We can see that the tests are running. And if I survey the results, we can see that uh, in total, the inlined version of the add function won 12 out of 20 times. And if you scroll up in the console, you can see the individual timings. Uh, the difference in all cases is extremely slight. If you think maybe that this is just like a bad result and maybe the, uh, the inlined version of the code should have won more often than that, but something else is happening in the background, you can run this again. But the results are going to pan out pretty much the same. This time it won 13 out of 20 runs. And uh, this is what I'm trying to get at when I call this a game maker urban legend, because the force inline pragma doesn't do anything at all in game maker VM mode. Like it'll just be straight up ignored. In YYC, usually when I do this, inlined code wins more often than not. Let's increase the uh, let's increase the number of runs to from 20 to 200, and maybe we'll we'll get some. Um, higher, we'll get some statistics of higher significance. That was hard to say. But um, in any case, the difference that this makes is so slight that um, random random statistical noise, random occurrences, 109 out of 200 at that time, random fluctuations like how your OS task scheduler decides to allocate um, a CPU time to game maker, uh, random events like your antivirus scanning in the background, Random variations like that that are well outside your control just have so much more of an overall impact on how long it takes your game to execute than inlining versus not inlining a function. In fact, the simple act of taking the return value of this function and saving it to a variable, which then isn't even used for anything, uh, that's going to take a, uh, a not 
insignificant amount of time in and of itself in both cases. So if I don't do anything with that return value, if I don't save it to a variable and run it again, all right, so on average, that took about 15 milliseconds each instead of 20 milliseconds. So the act of saving the return value to a variable took 25% of the time that we were seeing earlier. Um, the results didn't really change. The inline code won about 106 out of 200 times, which is just a hair over uh, 50%. And uh, if you really wanted to get down into the weeds of benchmarking, you could argue that this is a bad benchmark because it's, it's not doing things like interleaving the tests or randomizing the tests and... Um, Maybe it's possible that like weird memory cache related things inside the CPU are um, giving one test the advantage over the other. But honestly, if that's the case, that just makes the difference here even more meaningless, right? If like optimizations inside the CPU itself cause the results to be skewed more so than uh, actually inlining a function or not. Um, let's see. I did say that I would test this on GMRT. So now that I've finished dunking on uh, inline code, I I would like to um I would like to make one more point, which is that there are some cases where um, functions just won't be inlined even if you ask them to be. So if uh, the obvious example would be something that's recursive, right? Uh, function recursive return recursive or something like that. And then if we try to inline this, this will uh this ju this just won't work, right? Uh, because this is infinitely recursive. It's a function trying to call itself. If you do this, the, the size of the code will explode to infinity. Uh, that won't work. But there are also cases where you are allowed to do things like, uh, let's say var f equals a function. Uh, should I also make this an add function? Let's make this like a, oh, I don't know, how about a return square function or something like that. So due to the nature of GameMaker and because you are allowed to just assign functions to variables, and you are allowed to do things like make variables change their value. Uh, for example, if random number between 1 and 100 is less than 50, uh, we can reassign f to be equal to function to be something else. Um, you can ask GameMaker to inline this, but it won't really accomplish anything because uh, this is not able to be determined at compile time. Like, if you call this... Oh, uh, that doesn't have an argument, huh? Uh, if you call this function... At compile time, you can't determine what this is going to resolve to, because at runtime, it may or may not be assigned to something else. So, any time at all that you have a function that belongs inside a variable, that could be something like this, that could be something like a static function inside, a, inside another function, that could be something like a method inside a struct, or inside an object. Inlining your code will also just be like straight up ignored by the compiler and it won't do anything. I do sometimes see people putting force inline inside their uh, struct methods, inside their object methods and whatever. Um, I can't stop you from doing that, but let's, uh, let's set our expectations accordingly and approximately how much faster we're going to be making our game by doing that. We've already seen even when it is used how little of a difference it makes. Anyway, I think I've bashed on this long enough. Uh, I'm going to end it off. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and poking the engine with a stick to see what kinds of noises it makes. I guess I'll post this code on GitHub. Uh, you can run it yourself. You can see what kind of results you get. If you can think of any other what we might call game maker urban legends that you want to be investigated, let me know and maybe I'll cover some other stuff like this in the future. I've already gone over depth equals negative y being slow. Um, before anyone asks about that one, I'll have a link to it, I guess, on screen. Anyway, sometimes I post normal videos on Game Maker. Sometimes I post videos on like shader stuff and 3D stuff. Sometimes I post videos on whatever you would even consider this to be. So if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. If you want to see some videos on actual optimizations that you can do that will make your game demonstrably faster, I've made a few videos on that. Here's a playlist if you want it. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out the Steam page for Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. I hope you all found this insightful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.